All right, good morning. Um, I'm going to stay away from politics and religion today. Um, too early for Glenn Beck, but I'm at the point where I don't get reception. I did get to listen to the, to the uh, Writer's Almanac. Got my daughter on the bus. I'm going to get to work pretty early today, which is always good. Um, good to do whatever job you have, no? I think so. Davinder ready. So I'm ahead of schedule. Got a lot of learning to do, but uh, it's pretty good right now. Windshield wipers, I'm having a bit of an issue. It's not raining so bad. Um, I had the same issue. I thought I fixed it, and now it's now it's back to being a problem, but a different problem. Uh, need to find some time to uh, to get this stuff fixed, but it's just just how it is, you know. <laughs> and I thought I fixed it, so uh, I need money, you know, whatever. It's just how it is. Maybe I'll make it make it big on YouTube, you know, and, uh, be able to get my windshield wipers fixed. I still I, I would still keep my job. I really like it, but it would be nice to you know be able to pay all your bills. And and not have to worry. I see when people are speeding in front of me, kicking up some water, that, that's when I need the windshield wipers. But, all right, it is what it is. Yesterday, <clears throat> even though we weren't feeling so well, even though I'm tired, I mean, Shabbos, all right, maybe we'll talk a little bit of religion, because Shabbos was a miracle um, <laughs> before we get to Sunday. Let's talk about Shabbos. Quite an incredible Shabbos, how we got a minion together. I mean, how much work it takes to put together a minion in a small town, you know, and like, I don't know, yes, hey, I was meeting someone was, we used to live in our community, moved away, they were talking about how great the shul is where they live, and now they have a shul all the time, and the thing is, they had a shul all the time, and they very rarely came to us, and I don't know, I felt it was kind of an insult to us, I kind of spoke up about it, but it would, um, it is what it is, um, whatever, I don't know, so, But it takes a lot of work. And like, if this guy would have come to, to Minion every week, you know, I didn't know he wanted it. He was like, why is it that in this town he's going to school every week and by us he was, I don't know. Maybe he lives a little closer, it's a little far away, whatever. And, uh, I don't know. I didn't want to pressure him too much, but, but now he's going to school every week. He's giving a I mean, sure, I don't understand what am I doing wrong so I can learn to. I'm, it's not a tie on him. It's a, It's. I want to learn what am I doing wrong so I can do my job better, you know, because my job is to get people to come to shul, and, um, and I want to apologize if what I did when they did live here was wrong, I don't know, I'm just trying to do, do my job, you know, so anyway, um, but it's all in the Shemayim, I don't know, but like, I, I, I I have to put in my Ishtadlis, you know, but what Ishtadlis I put in yesterday and what a simch it was when we couldn't imagine that we'd have a minion yesterday and yet, and and so many of the people who told us they were going to be there didn't show up and yet, miraculously, we got it all together. We actually had 11 by, at, at one point, 12, 13 if you want to count, people don't count for minion. Um, which I, I'm fine with doing. It's just uh, I can't uh, I can't go against the will of the congregation, you know. But <laughs> that's neither here nor there. Um, but I ran all over White Lake, and I got the minion together. I, I, 
we were a little bit late, so there was no Russia, there was no, but, you know, we stuck, what we, I mean, whatever, I don't have to talk about the whole story, but it was, I'm thankful to Kadosh Baruch Hu that we were able to serve him, and it's such a gift. Now, um, a lot of people are upset at me that I, about, I'm going to talk about Sunday, how I did things that were a little bit, not what in our community we really usually do, but <clears throat> I don't know, we we have different ways of having fun. I mean, the Hasidim certainly do believe that fun is a major part of their practice, you know, and living life, you know, like Rabbi, I, I've said it before, I'll say it again, Rabbi Bart Sadov really brilliantly says, you know, that religion is more about man than it is about God, and that's the way God wants it. Rabbi Bart Sadok for teaching us that um, and thank God for sending us rabbis like this who, who uh, you know, people like Rabbi Siegel, Rabbi Bart Sadok who are out of the out of the box and can give us insights within Torah uh, that are different than, what, than the, what's standard but I'm also thankful for the standard rabbis that we're able to learn the standard stuff, you know, I'm thankful for everything and I'm also thankful for things outside the box. I did yesterday. Yesterday I went with my family to the Chiller Theater Convention in Parsippany, New Jersey. We've been going for a few years. There's two conventions that we really like are... Well, there's two conventions that we go to. Not necessarily that we love, but that we go to. The one that we love is Monster Bash, and that's really far away. Um... But it's amazing, and the guys from Monster Bash were there yesterday. We were talking, we we're discussing, you know, every year at Monster Bash, they have um, there's a Catholic priest who comes and does a Sunday morning service, not a Catholic service really, um, but uh, like an interfaith service or non-denominational service. And to me, I think that's just a beautiful thing that we have at a convention like this that God is welcome. So they, so Ron, who, Ron Adams who runs Monster Bash, he told me yesterday that was kind of the first place we went was to Ron Adams' table to see our friends, you know. And he said, if you ever, I did one presentation, it's on YouTube, about um, stock footage. Um, and he said, you know, if I have another presentation I want to give, have the stage whenever I want. He really liked the presentation I gave. I was thinking of something about Bela Lugosi, but what I mentioned to him was what I would like to do. Maybe we could do both. I don't know. But one thing I would like to do <coughs> is um, I know they have a, a, pa a Protestant pastor who also comes. And to have the rabbi, the priest, and the pastor all together do an interfaith, you know, or ecumenical uh, Sunday morning, you know, church service, whatever they want to call it, um, all together. And they thought that was a great idea, and I think that's what we might do this year. I'm hoping we're able to go to Monster Bash. It's going to be com complicated, but my wife is set on doing it, and I think we're going we're gonna to go. And, uh, God willing, you know, we'll have money to go and whatever, we'll save up money for it. And, you know, I was talking to my daughter this morning, we were talking about, there was something on the radio on NPR about quinceañeras and how they're becoming more mainstream and how Mattel is making quinceañera Barbies. And we were discussing, you know, like, we don't really do, like, birthday parties in our house. And most of the people in our community also don't do birthday parties. I don't think anybody, you know, in the community where our kids go to school, I think they're not allowed to have birthday parties, which is a smart thing, because then the parents, I mean, most of them are suffering intense poverty, and, like, why should they feel pressure to have something like this, um, you know, when it's not necessary, and so forth, so... Things, you know, we want to kind of discuss.
Gus. Um, so whatever, well, that's that's part of the. Uh, But, but, but like I was talking to my daughter about it and I asked her, I was like, would you rather go to the school you're going to or would you rather go to a, a public school and have parties every year for your birthday? And she said she'd rather go to the school she goes to. I said, would you rather go to a different Jewish school where, they, where your friends do have birthday parties and they'd be speaking English and she has a hard time with the Yiddish and... Uh, she said, no, she'd rather go to the school she's going to. So I want to, I want my kids to be happy. And I'm thankful that they're happy in a, in a Hasidish environment. You know, so, uh, so, uh, so anyway, there were a few famous people there at, at, now the, the difference between Monster Bash and and uh, and Chiller is twofold, and they're both really the same thing. But uh, now, we if Chiller was even half as far away as Monster Bash, we wouldn't go to Chiller. We only go to Chiller because it's not that far away. It's uh, about an hour and 40 minute drive from us, as opposed to Monster Bash, which is about eight hours away. So, um, you know, that's a, a major, you know, a major difference that we have there, you know. Um, Chiller is much bigger, and it's also, even though it's in New Jersey, New Jersey, it's more that New York attitude, it's not, it's a little bit more gritty, it's not as family friendly, but it, but we didn't run into anything that was inappropriate this time, the, the first time we went, we kind of passed by one thing that made us a little uncomfortable, we, we just passed by it very quickly, and, and there were some of those type of things there, I think, but we didn't run into them. Uh, we didn't see everything. Um, also, they have, tend to have much bigger stars at Chiller, but a lot of them were on Shabbos, um, so we didn't. Uh, so we only, you know, we didn't see a lot of them. And even some of them who were there Sunday, we missed. We got there a little bit later because yes, they actually also were in a documentary film. My son made a little, a few dollars that he was able to spend it at Chiller, buy some toys he wanted, um, which was really cool, which was fun. Also, you know, he got to kind of have his first job, four years old, you know, his first gig, making a little money, and he spent it all right away the same day. Um, even though he, when we discussed it with him, he, he mentioned he wanted to save his money, but then... You know, we wound up buying stuff for him more than than uh, that, but he he wanted two Funko Pop uh, monsters. One was the creature from Black Lagoon, and one was the mutant from Metaluna from this island Earth. And he wanted those very much, and he was able to buy them. You know, and that's that spent all the money he made yesterday. But uh, more power to him. You know, so. <clears throat> And it's what he wanted. It wasn't like, you know, we wanted him to get it. It was specifically what he wanted, and and he can enjoy them. Um, now the really big stars, the one that we missed that we kind of wanted to see was Greg from the Brady Bunch because my kids are into the Brady Bunch. We missed him. We got well, by the time we got there, he was gone already. Um, and the other big ones, it was kind of enough just to see them. I mean, I didn't feel like going up and talking to them, having a conversation with them, which then means 
you have to pay money to take pictures and stuff and like uh, or, or get autographs or whatever and, and you know the autographs were a little bit cheaper like last year the guys from from uh, Perfect Strength not last year last time they do it twice a year usually April and October so in April they had the guys from Perfect Strangers and I kind of wanted to get their autograph and stuff but I didn't because it was really expensive now this time the guys from Leave It to Beaver were there Jerry Mathers and Tony Dow. I'm not a huge fan of Leave It to Beaver. I kind of wanted to show it to my kids. I thought it was on Netflix or Hulu and it was on neither, <clears throat> which I seem to remember it was on, but we never watched it <clears throat> when it was on. And it's on Amazon, but you got to pay for it. We weren't going to pay extra. You know, if it was on Amazon Prime, I would have shown it to my kids. I showed some clips on uh, YouTube, which were kind of interesting and curious, um, definitely a different time, um, although, yes and no, you know, uh, what was interesting, I just liked it, I don't know, but I showed it to my kids, to one, to my oldest daughter, she was only one up at the time, and like, they weren't really that interested in it, I don't know, I, I watched, you know, reruns of Leave It to Beaver, and I remember the new Leave It to Beaver, um, that's when I was a kid, and I used to watch that, um, but I, I wasn't, it, was, it didn't interest me that much to go and get an autograph or take a picture with them when it's going to cost, you know, either $30 for the picture or $40 for the autograph, it just didn't, didn't appeal to me that much, also I didn't, like, feel bad for them, like, they needed money, <laughs> I don't know, maybe they do, I'm sure they get royalties for it. I don't know. It's interesting how the new Leave It to, Leave it to Beaver, even though it was made in the 80s, was like lost, apparently. Um, there's a whole question of, you know, because like it, they say it'll probably never come out on DVD because, um, you know, most of the episodes have been lost. The, you know, the original, you know, maybe people have a tape from TV or something, but like, you know, that's just a, a curious thing to me. I was reading about that on Wikipedia, but I'm almost at work, so I'll get to the to the point. Who did we talk to? Other than yeah, we bought toys and stuff. We didn't buy any T-shirts. You know, we we kind of saved our money. I don't know. It was twenty dollars per adult to get in. The kids were free, but it's supposed to be thirty dollars. But we got there late because we were doing this film shoot in the morning. Um, so we only. Spent forty dollars to get in. Um, we got two autographs. Um, each of those were twenty-five, so that so that's up more up to ninety dollars now that we spent. And then we bought some other toys and stuff. There's this people they sell like Legos of superheroes and monsters and stuff. Um, Star Wars and stuff. The kids like those. It's not really my thing, but the kids like them. And like I don't know they were like. I think they were five for twenty dollars, but we wound up getting like seven or eight of them. Um, should have gotten ten by that point, but whatever. It was like a whole thing with the kids. They were really, and they also had their like um, also something. I'm not really into the the movie Gremlins. They had like the, the cute one, Magua, I think they call it, and it was only ten dollars a plush animal. Probably worth a lot more money. I think on eBay they're like fifty dollars. So that was a good buy. So then we're already up to like over a hundred dollars um, that we spent, and then like um, my son, you know, he spent his forty dollars on on uh, the, the Funko Pops, and my daughter had a Bride of Frankenstein Funko Pop that my son broke, so that was another twenty dollars. Um, so whatever, we got it. We got a good haul, and we I think we spent less than two hundred dollars all in all, or maybe just about $200. Then we went out to eat in Teaneck. Really nice place, uh, kind of fast food place, but, you know, kosher fast food is expensive. Um, this place is one of the cheapest kosher places I've found that, that's nice, because some of the kosher places aren't that nice, but I guess in Teaneck, you know. And, like, my wife, she was like, you know, we could move here. And I was like, you know, I... I still have this pipe dream of opening a Stiebel in Teaneck. 
um, you know, I, I kind of feel like I should hop around and do it before someone else does it. Um, I know it's expensive there, but I don't know. Are there any Balabatim who want like a Hasidish, you know, because like I know like in Woodmere, they love like Ramosha Weinberger. He's like really popular. He was my Rebbe in high school. And even if it's not like that style, which is, I guess that's what would fit in T-neck more than a Stiebel, like a more traditional Stiebel, like, like how in, in Queens, I used to dab in, you know, by Rabbi Obama, Rabbi, and Rabbi Friedman, and there were a few other Stiebelers like that, um, and Rabbi Savitsky, Rabbi, I mean, Rabbi Savitsky, you know, he himself, he doesn't wear a strimal, or, I mean, his schwer wore a spudik, um, on Purim, he wears his schwer spudik, his late schwer spudik, but, uh, uh, whatever, I mean, but, you know, those are, like, maybe a little bit more Haredi than Moshe Weinberger, who's a little bit more modern, um, in certain ways, although I'm, in certain ways, more modern than Rabbi Weinberger, in certain things, I don't know, uh, I guess in my lifestyle, in certain ways I'm more modern, I don't know, but, like, whereas in my ideology, maybe I'm more Haredi, um, in certain areas, it's hard to say, you know, I mean, it's definitely, you know, his obsession with Rav Cook is, like, uh, out of the box, you know, and, and his adoration of Shlomo Karlbach, I'm having more and more problems with that, um, as, you know, when I was a kid, I was much more of a chassid of, of Shlomo Karlbach, and I learned more about him, and people who, were victims of his, um, at, I've kind of, you know, removed myself from there, um, so, whatever, you know, it's just how it is, but, you know, I don't really have as much of a problem, though, with Rav Soloveitchik, uh, which some of my rabbeim do, I, um, particularly ones who didn't learn by him, or most of my rabbeim learned by him, I don't, I don't have such an issue with him, um, personally, I don't have an issue really with Rabbi Cook either, I just don't think, you know, it's the same, you know, it's the same thing with Lubavitcher Rabbi, like, this, like, view that they're larger than life, that's the kind of thing, really, to me, that's more problematic, but whatever, I mean, my wife is more a satmer, she's more, like, against, you know, more uncomfortable, uncomfortable with Rav Cook. I, I guess, you know, I grew up somewhat, you know, but, um, being interested in him with, with, a, a certain, you know, I remember my Bobby had a book, from Rabbi Boxer that he translated from Ralph Cook's writings that I, um, who was her professor in college, been seeing Boxer, you know, he also made the Boxer Machser. Um, I remember I saw Rabbi Weinberger had been seeing Boxer's translation of Ralph Cook on his desk in Ezra Academy, and I said, you know, he wasn't so Froome, and he's like, yeah, I know he's a conservative rabbi, but but this is the best translation. I was like, wow, you know, that kind of opened my eyes and made me a little bit more open-minded in things, not about Rav Cook, but about conservative. Uh, but I want to get to the real interesting story. Maybe I'll make a separate video about that uh, from Chiller. So thank you for watching. God bless. Please like, share, and subscribe. And then um, the next video is going to be about the experiences that we had yesterday at Chiller that to, to my wife and I both, I think were the most interesting. Um, but, uh, so we're probably now that Weird Al Yankovic is going on tour again. I'm wondering, is he going to do Chiller again? Cause it seems like every time he's on tour, he does Chiller in April. And the problem was two years in a row, it was during Pesach, and there was no way we could... It was like Mamish Yantiv. It wasn't like Cholomoyed. It was Yantiv, and there was no way we could go. 
this year, I'm hoping, especially Pesach is early this year, we're hoping Weird Al Yankovic is going to come to Chiller this year. Um, I'm also, we're planning to go in Poughkeepsie to his show. We've got to get tickets. We've got to remember to do that. Um, maybe I'll tell my wife now that we have, after she pays the rent, she should get tickets to Weird Al Yankovic. It's going to be a different type of show. Um, so we'll see how that goes. But um, but again, like I said, thank you for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe. I hope Weird Al is going to come back to Chiller this year because he was there twice that we couldn't go. And my kids would love to see him. I would love to see him. My wife would love to see him. So, um, and he sounds like a really nice guy. I know he's probably going to charge a lot of money. Not probably him, probably his producers or whatever, which he deserves. He's probably one of the greatest musical geniuses alive today. So, uh, and he's such a humble guy. Like, you see videos, people talking to him. He seems like, and maybe I'll get the autograph where he'll write Pretty Fly for a Rabbi. So, all right, we'll talk later. God bless. Please like, share, and subscribe. And um, and now I'm going to make another video about the most interesting part of Chiller yesterday. Um, if you're in Teaneck, check out Schnitzel Plus. Uh, we like it. Food's good and not too expensive. And um, that's the second time we've gone there. We were there, Cholamoid Sukkis. Um, all right. Take care. God bless people.